Here are RN practice questions from 31 to 40. Please consider subscribing my channel if you haven't. An emergency department nurse is sent to the scene of a massive motor vehicle collision. A client there reports neck pain. Which actions should the nurse perform at this time? Select all that apply. 1. Apply a hard cervical collar. 2. Assess neck range of motion. 3. Inspect client's respiratory pattern. 4. Position client flat on firm surface. 5. Use log rolling technique if moving client. Correct answer. The initial priorities for a client with a suspected cervical spine injury are to ensure a patent airway and immobilize the spine to prevent further injury. This includes applying a rigid hard collar, placing the client on a firm surface, like backboard, and moving the client as a unit, log rolling, if required, options 1, 4, and 5. A soft foam cervical collar does not provide immobilization. Further stabilization is achieved by taping down the client's head and using straps to immobilize the arms, especially if the client is not cooperating. After immobilizing the client, the nurse should obtain a baseline set of vital signs to monitor for neurogenic shock, like hypotension, bradycardia, poikilothermia, like inability to regulate body temperature. A potential complication of spinal cord injury. The nurse should also assess the client's respiratory rate, pattern, and effort. Presence of abdominal breathing or increased work of breathing may indicate impending loss of airway and require prompt rapid sequence intubation, option 3. Option 2, movement of the neck, upper extremities should be avoided until cervical spine injury is ruled out with imaging, which is done after the spine is immobilized with a hard collar. Educational objective. The priorities for a client with a suspected cervical spine injury are maintaining a patent airway and spinal immobilization. Interventions include application of a rigid hard collar, placing the client on a firm surface, log rolling the client during movement and transfers, and continued assessment of need for an advanced airway. The intensive care nurse is caring for a client who has just been extubated. Which interventions are appropriate at this time? Select all that apply. 1. Administer prescribed oral narcotics for throat pain. 2. Administer warmed, humidified oxygen via face mask. 3. Give the client ice chips to moisten the mouth. 4. Provide mouth care with oral sponges. 5. Start the client on incentive spirometer. Correct answer. Recently extubated clients are at high risk for aspiration, airway obstruction, laryngeal edema and or spasm, and respiratory distress. To prevent complications, clients are placed in high fowler position to maximize lung expansion and prevent aspiration of secretions. Warmed, humidified oxygen is administered immediately after extubation to provide high concentrations of supplemental oxygen without drying out the mucosa, option 2. Oral care is provided to decrease bacteria and contaminants as well as promote comfort, option 4. Clients are instructed to frequently cough, deep breathe, and use an incentive spirometer to expand alveoli and prevent atelectasis, option 5. Options 1 and 3, clients are kept NPO after extubation to prevent aspiration. They may have either a bedside swallow screen or a more formal swallow evaluation by a speech therapist prior to swallowing any food, drink, or medication. Educational Objective Recently extubated clients are immediately placed on humidified oxygen and monitored for aspiration, airway obstruction, and respiratory distress. Clients should remain NPO until swallowing function has been evaluated. In addition, clients should be given routine oral care as well as instructions on coughing, deep breathing, and use of incentive spirometry. The nurse is caring for a client who had a near-drowning accident in cold weather. Which assessment finding indicates the most severe injury? 1. Decreased body temperature. 2. Toes pointed straight down. 3. Weak and thready pulse. 4. Wheezing on auscultation. 
Correct answer. Near drowning occurs when a client is underwater and unable to breathe for an extended period. In a matter of seconds, major body organs begin to shut down from lack of oxygen and permanent damage results. Decerebrate posturing is a sign of severe brain damage. During assessment, the nurse would observe arms and legs straight out, toes pointed down, and the head, neck arched back. These assessment findings indicate that severe injury has occurred. Option 1. Hypothermia is generally seen in near-drowning victims. One of the first goals of treatment is to warm the client. This is done using warmed IV fluids, blankets, and air. Sustained hypothermia will eventually lead to organ failure, making this an urgent finding but not initially life-threatening. Option 3. A weak and thready pulse is generally detected in near-drowning victims due to hypothermia. Once the client is properly warmed, the pulse generally returns to normal. Sometimes the client is so cold that a pulse cannot be detected. This is why a client is not dead until warm and dead. Such clients may require prolonged resuscitation. Option 4. When wheezing is heard on auscultation after a near drowning, the first observation would be that the client is still moving air and providing oxygen to the body. The wheezing may indicate that the client has bronchospasm. If the client has aspirated fluid, crackles would be heard. Most such clients will develop acute respiratory distress syndrome. Educational objective. Decerebrate posturing. Arms and legs straight out. Toes pointed down. Head, neck arched back. Usually indicates severe brain injury. The nurse is caring for a client with an implantable cardioverter defibrillator ICD. The client goes into ventricular tachycardia and is pulseless. The ICD has fired twice. What action should the nurse take? 1. Administer epinephrine 1 mg IV push. 2. Deactivate the ICD with a magnet. 3. Initiate chest compressions. 4. Take no action and let the ICD work. Correct answer. A client with an ICD that is firing is receiving electrical shocks from the internal defibrillator to interrupt the dysrhythmia. It is still imperative that the client receive chest compressions in the form of cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, to provide circulation of blood to the vital organs. The nurse should implement the pulseless arrest algorithm, allowing 30 to 60 seconds for the ICD to complete its therapy cycle before applying external defibrillation pads, paddles. Option 1. Epinephrine should be administered after CPR and defibrillation. Option 2. The ICD is firing as it was programmed to do. It should not be deactivated. Option 4. The nurse should let the ICD work but needs to implement CPR in addition. Educational objective. The ICD is designed to defibrillate potentially life-threatening dysrhythmias. Although the device is able to sense electrical activity of the heart and respond, it is unable to sense or treat pulselessness. CPR should be initiated in the pulseless client with an ICD. A client with palpitations is admitted with supraventricular tachycardia. The client's heart rate is 210 per minute. Which is the most appropriate initial intervention? 1. Ask the client to bear down as if having a bowel movement. 2. Grab the crash cart and apply hands-free defibrillation pads. 3. Place ECG leads on client to further assess electrical activity. 4. Place IV line distally from the heart for adenosine administration. Correct answer. Clients with paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, street, regular, narrow QRS complex tachycardia, are initially treated with vagal maneuvers. The act of bearing down, as if having a bowel movement, Valsalva, is an example of these maneuvers and may need to be attempted more than once. Vagal maneuvers work by increasing intrathoracic pressure and stimulating the vagus nerve, which supplies parasympathetic nerve fibers to the heart, resulting in slowed electrical conduction through the atrioventricular node. 
Option 2, cardioversion, not defibrillation, is used with this type of arrhythmia when it is refractory to medication. Cardioversion delivers a synchronized electrical current to the heart. This works by stopping the electrical activity to the heart and briefly allowing a normal heartbeat to return. Option 3, an ECG is used to diagnose VT and can be obtained while or after the client is asked to perform the vagal maneuvers as it is not therapeutic. Option 4, adenosine is the drug of choice to treat SVT and has a 5 to 6 second half-life, the time it takes for the drug to be reduced to half of its original concentration. Placing the IV line as close as possible, not distal, to the heart is essential for the drug to have full effect. Adenosine is given rapidly over 1 to 2 seconds and then followed by a rapid 20 ml normal saline flush. Transient asystole is common, and clients often experience flushing and dizziness. Educational objective. Supraventricular tachycardia is a regular, narrow QRS complex tachycardia with a rate of around 150 to 220 per minute. The best treatment is vagal maneuvers and adenosine IV push. A two-year-old at an outpatient clinic stops breathing and does not have a pulse. CPR is initiated. When the automated external defibrillator, AED, arrives, the nurse notes that it has only adult AED pads. What is the appropriate action at this time? 1. Continue CPR without using the automated external defibrillator, AED, until paramedics arrive. 2. Place one AED pad on the chest and the other on the back. 3. Place one AED pad on the upper right chest and the other on the lower left side. 4. Place one AED pad on the upper right chest and dispose of the other. Correct answer. An automated external defibrillator, AD, should be used as soon as it is available. Pediatric AED pads or a pediatric dose attenuator should be used for children age birth to 8 years if available. Standard adult pads can be used as long as they do not overlap or touch. If adult AED pads are used, one should be placed on the chest and the other on the back, sandwiching the heart. Option 1. If an AED is available, it should be placed on the client as soon as possible. Research shows that survival rates increase when CPR and defibrillation occur within 3 to 5 minutes of arrest. Option 3. Standard placement of adult AD pads on a 2-year-old would cause the pads to touch or overlap. Touching or overlapping of pads allows the shock to move directly from one pad to the other without traveling through the heart. Option 4. Both AD pads are necessary for the defibrillator to work effectively. Educational objective. An automated external defibrillator, AED, should be used as soon as it is available. Adult AD pads can be used on a pediatric client if pediatric pads are unavailable. One pad is placed on the chest and the other is placed on the back, sandwiching the heart. The emergency department nurse is caring for a client who requires gastric lavage for a drug overdose. Which action would be appropriate? 1. Lavage through a small bore nasogastric tube. 2. Place client in Trendelenburg position during lavage. 3. Prepare intubation and suction supplies at the bedside. 4. Wait an hour after gastric decompression to initiate lavage. Correct answer. Gastric lavage, GL, is performed through an orogastric tube to remove ingested toxins and irrigate the stomach. GL is rarely performed as it is associated with a high risk of complications, like Aspiration, esophageal or gastric perforation, dysrhythmias. GL is only indicated if the overdose is potentially lethal and if GL can be initiated within one hour of the overdose. Activated charcoal administration is the standard treatment for overdose, but it is ineffective for some drugs, like lithium, iron, alcohol. Intubation and suction supplies should always be available at the bedside during GL in case the client develops aspiration or respiratory distress. Option 3. Option 1. 
GL is usually performed through a large bore, 36 to 42 French, or a gastric tube so that a large volume of water or saline can be instilled in and out of the tube. Option 2, during GL. Clients should be placed on their side or with the head of bed elevated to minimize aspiration risk. Option 4, GL should be initiated within one hour of overdose ingestion to be effective. The client's stomach should be decompressed first, but lavage should be initiated as soon as possible afterwards. Educational objective. Gastric lavage is used to remove ingested toxins and irrigate the stomach after a drug overdose. It should be initiated within one hour of overdose. The nurse should position the client to prevent aspiration and have emergency respiratory equipment at the bedside. The nurse is supervising a graduate nurse, GN, on a telemetry unit. An assigned client develops asystole with no pulse, and emergency care interventions are initiated. Which action by the GN would cause the supervising nurse to intervene? 1. Administers IV epinephrine. 2. Applies oxygen with bag mask. 3. Initiates chest compressions. 4. Provides defibrillator shock. Correct answer. The client in asystole has a total absence of ventricular electrical activity and is pulseless, apneic, and unresponsive. The nurse should first verify the monitor reading by assessing the client and palpating for a pulse, and then call for help and initiate emergency care, like CPR, oxygenated ventilation. Defibrillation is not indicated when there is no electrical activity present, like asystole, or when the heart muscle is not contracting despite an organized rhythm, like pulseless electrical activity, P. Defibrillation attempts to convert lethal ventricular dysrhythmias, like ventricular fibrillation and pulseless ventricular tachycardia, into an organized rhythm by passing an electric shock through the heart. Defibrillation cannot create an organized rhythm if there is no electrical activity in the heart, option 4. Options 1, 2, and 3, immediate interventions for asystole and P include CPR and oxygenated ventilation. Advanced cardiovascular life support measures include epinephrine IV, placement of advanced airway, like intubation, and treatment of reversible causes, like hypovolemia, hyperkalemia. When treating systole or P, the absolute priority is providing continuous high-quality CPR and oxygenated ventilation until circulation spontaneously returns or the client enters into a shockable rhythm. Unfortunately, restoration of circulation may not be possible, and clients in asystole often cannot be resuscitated. Educational objective. Asystole is characterized by a total absence of ventricular electrical activity. The client is pulseless, apneic, and unresponsive. Treatment includes CPR, oxygenated ventilation, and advanced cardiovascular life support measures, like epinephrine IV, advanced airway. Defibrillation is not effective for treatment of systole or pulseless electrical activity. The nurse is caring for a client on a mechanical ventilator. The settings on the ventilator have just been changed. And the standing prescription is to draw arterial blood gases 30 minutes after a ventilator change. In anticipation of this blood draw, what intervention should the nurse implement? 1. Avoid suctioning the client. 2. Pre-oxygenate the client. 3. Raise the head of the bed. 4. Reduce the amount of sedation medication. Correct answer. Arterial blood gases, ABS, indicate the acid-base balance in the body and how well oxygen is being carried to the tissues. It is common to measure ABS after a ventilator change to assess how well the client has tolerated it. Factors such as changes in the client's activity level or oxygen settings or suctioning within 20 minutes prior to the blood draw can cause inaccurate results. Unless the client's condition dictates otherwise, the nurse should avoid suctioning as it will deplete the client's oxygen level and cause inaccurate test results. Option 2. 
Pre-oxygenation should occur prior to suctioning and possibly before position changes. It will affect ABG results. Option 3. The head of the bed should be maintained at 30 degrees or higher in an intubated client to prevent aspiration and allow for adequate chest expansion. This position will not affect ABG results. Option 4. If a client is being weaned from the ventilator, sedation may be reduced. A client with reduced sedation may become anxious and have an increased activity level. These could affect the ABG results. Educational objective. If the client's condition allows, the nurse should avoid suctioning or changing activity or oxygenation levels prior to drawing of ABGs. These actions can result in inaccurate ABG results. When caring for a client with a left radial artery catheter, which assessment data obtained by the nurse indicates the need to take immediate action. 1. Capillary refill of less than 3 seconds. 2. Left hand cooler than right. 3. Mean arterial pressure of 65 mm Hg. 4. Pressure bag at 300 mm Hg. Correct answer. Although the Allen's test is performed before cannulating the radial artery and determines the adequacy of ulnar artery blood flow, circulation to the extremity is monitored frequently. The nurse must assess color, capillary refill, sensation, temperature, and movement per institution policy. Impairment in any of these parameters must be reported immediately because it may indicate impaired circulation to the extremity, and removal of the catheter may be necessary. Option 1. Capillary refill of less than 3 seconds is an indicator of normal arterial circulation. Option 3. A mean arterial pressure of 65 mm Hg is adequate to perfuse the vital organs. Option 4. To maintain patency of the arterial blood pressure monitoring system, an intravenous bag of normal saline solution is placed in a pressure infuser device. The device is set to maintain continual pressure at 300 mm Hg. The pressure drops as the volume of solution in the bag decreases and can be pumped back up. This does not pose an immediate threat to the client. Educational objective. When caring for a client with a radial, brachial, or femoral arterial line in place, the nurse must be able to assess for complications. These include hemorrhage, infection, thrombus formation, and circulatory and neurovascular impairment.